I just prayed about that. I had a dream last night, and there were going to be people show up and help me with this. It was amazing. It's amazing when we listen to that still, small voice inside us. It's important for all of us, but it's really, really important for empaths because we're listening to voices all the time. Whether it's a physical voice, whether it's the voice of our bodies, physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual, we're getting messages, we're inundated with it all the time. So self-care is extremely, extremely important. Now to clarify what an empath is, because sometimes, um, as I was growing up, I didn't have any language for this. I didn't have a role model for this. It was something that I learned and developed over time. I have to say, if anyone's wanting a really good um, empath book, there are two great books by Rose Rose Tree. She has a website. Um, she's American in Virginia. And her information is very handy. In fact, I use two of her books as a basis for the Empath 101 course, okay? Combined with information from the guides and 46 years of experience of walking around being sensitive, deciding that the thick skin thing wasn't going to work for me. So Rose Rose Tree. Yep. <laughs> okay. An empath. Basically, an empath can truly step into another's shoes. I remember when I was living in Fredericton and attending at St. Thomas, and I would laugh all the time. It seemed so strange to me because they were talking about the social construction of self and other. Because I couldn't understand that there was a separation. The reason being was I never felt the separation. So, but it could, because an empath, it's really like if I stand beside you and allow myself, I, I won't peek in right now, I promise. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> but if I, I stand with somebody, I'm there. I can feel what's going on for them. And there's a reason for that. An empath is different from being a psychic. And I know there's a lot of interest in intuitive type work in this group. Um, you don't have to be intuitive to be an empath. Okay? There's a difference. An empath and a psychic experience the energetic information they're getting very differently. An empath, it may take them a while. They may walk into a building, depending on what type of empath they are, and we'll talk about that. They may walk into a building and just, if they sit for a moment, they start to get a feeling, a sense of it. A psychic walks in, they get an immediate snap, immediate impression of what's going on. So, the speed at which the information comes is different between being an empath and being a psychic. There's also the idea an empath can be extremely distraught about the information they're feeling. Um, I arrived in Fredericton about 2.30 this afternoon and saw my first client at 4 o'clock, someone who, who needed to get fit in. As I delivered the messages, energetically working on her body, balancing the four energetic bodies, delivering the messages, I'm weeping and crying because I'm experiencing not only what her guides are trying to tell her, but her experience of receiving it. And I'm weeping and crying, and I'm fine. But it's a, an empath often gets really involved in what they're experiencing from the other. A psychic has an advantage. It's information for them. And they can get the information, and they can walk away from it. There's no sort of attachment, no sort of residue that way. So there's sometimes an advantage to being a psychic. So how they experience it, what, and what they do with the information, the non-attachment to information. Psychics are going to have a lot easier time than an empath. So that's why if you tell someone you've got a dear friend, and I don't know, empaths, we seem to have the please tell me your life story written on your forehead. You ever notice that? You can be sitting on the bus, you're in the airplane, you're at the, at the food court in the mall. Someone sits down and they just start telling you their life story, you know? And, and the thing is, it sits with us. We carry it around with us. We carry that energy around with us. A psychic can let it go. So it's the speed. The other thing is accuracy. A psychic, if they say, and you know, often in, in psychics, intuitives, they'll work with police departments, unsolved murders, that you know, things like that, things that the traditional ways can't do. So there's a way to measure. They'll say, okay, you know, the club is in the car, in the you know, and they and they'll lead the police there, right? And it's measurable. 
they tell you the winning lottery numbers, you know whether they're good or not because you play the lotto and you find out if you're a millionaire. An empath, it takes, there's not that measurableness, you just have that sense. You know, it's just, I've got a hunch about that person. And I know if I go over and give her a, hmm, I feel it right now, I give her a hug right now, <laughs> it's what she needs. And, I mean, I could have been wrong, but I don't think I was. No, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it, but it's not often as measurable, so we may get impressions, but we don't know for sure in the same way. So there really is a real difference between being an empath and being an intuitive or a psychic. 